Hello and welcome to our screencast on the respiratory system. So today we're going to take a look at the role of the respiratory system, the structures involved and the overall function. We'll also briefly talk about one of the major connections in the system and the importance of that connection uh, and some illnesses as well. So starting with the respiratory system, respiration is of course how we breathe. So this system is largely responsible for the intake of oxygen and the expelling of carbon dioxide. Okay. So the main structures involved in the respiratory system are the ones listed here. The mouth, the nose, lung, trachea, alveoli, bronchi, bronchioles, and diaphragm. We're going to run through the, the functions of each of these uh, just briefly here so you get an idea of where they are and what they do. So the first structure we have here, I think that's pretty obvious, that's the nose and the mouth. And the nose and the mouth main job is to bring in air and oxygen into the lungs. The next structure, once the air enters, it passes past our vocal cords and enters this kind of uh, thick, rigid, strong tube. And this strong tube is called the trachea. And it's the main passageway into the lungs. Now, on top of the trachea is your voice box, your larynx. And air will pass through the larynx, allowing you to speak and hum and la 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 la, allowing you to sing. And then once it passes through the voice box of trachea, it's now on its way into the lungs which would be the next structures here. Now you have two sets of lungs, left, right, and left, uh, left lung and right lung, and they're large sacs that fill with air. The two branches uh, that f go from the trachea to either the left lung or the right lung, these are called bronchi. Okay, branches are bronchi. Uh, and they're large branches, as I mentioned, that lead into the left and the right lung, and they actually turn into bronchioles. Okay? And so if we looked just quickly here, and all these little, let's say right here, all these little sections uh, of smaller and smaller and smaller tubes, these are bronchioles. And as the tubes get smaller, okay, uh, they, they reach to different areas of the lung. Okay, so you can't just be large tubes everywhere. They get progressively smaller until they reach the, the smallest possible point here. Now this structure here that I have labeled looks kind of like grapes in my diagram here. Uh, they're not purple in your body, but this is probably by far the most important structure in the respiratory system. Okay, This little bunch uh, of cells here is called the alveoli. Now this is the site where gas exchange happens. This is where all your essentially breathing takes place. So a very important structure in the respiratory system, alveoli. So what exactly happens in the alveoli? Uh, the alveoli, or if you have a bunch of them, alveolus, is what I think is the most important site and structure within the respiratory system. This is where your blood and your oxygen will meet for the very first time, and where carbon dioxide will say bye bye to the body. Here is a diagram that uh, represents that gas exchange with the circulatory system, which we've talked about, and the respiratory system. So this pink thing right here, as you can see, is called the alveolus. This is one of those tiny little purple bulbs or tiny little um, uh, structures uh, within the uh, set of lungs. Just one. You have millions of these. And surrounding each alveolus is a capillary. And you can see that as red blood cells pass very close by the alveolus, oxygen will diffuse in and carbon dioxide will diffuse out. As the air rushes in, carbon dioxide will rush out and air will rush into the blood. Carbon dioxide will, run, will rush out of the blood. And we get this gas exchange. And this gas exchange allow us, allows us to breathe. Okay, So the blood vessels that surround the alveoli are filled with O2 rich blood. And this is because of diffusion, because the oxygen moves from an area of high concentration, which is in the alveoli, to an area of low concentration, which is traditionally in the blood. So here we go back to this diagram. We have air coming in or oxygen. There's, a diff there's diffusion happening. It's diffusing from the high concentration gradient here to the low concentration gradient here. And this change in concentration allows it to move very quickly into the bloodstream. The blood cells pick up the oxygen and carry it away. At the same time that this oxygen is diffusing in, carbon dioxide is diffusing out of the blood because we have a high concentration of carbon dioxide here and a low concentration of carbon dioxide here. It's that switch that we've talked about. One coming in, one going out. It happens so, so fast. Okay? Now, 
Just like we talked about the capillaries being specialized, alveoli are specialized. They are one cell layer thick to allow for the diffusion of material in and out of the lungs. Here's a diagram that shows the alveolus. You can see how each alveoli sac is covered with capillaries. And that, because the capillaries are so thin, and because the alveoli are so thin, this gas exchange can happen at an instant and happen with ease. The last structure here uh, is called the diaphragm, and it's that green line there on the picture. And that green line actually regulates the amount of air in the lungs. So your diaphragm will actually raise or lower and help to let air in or help to force air out depending on the, the position of the diaphragm. Okay? So taking a quick look at the diaphragm, here it work, here's how it works. Okay, so you take a breath out. Notice how the diaphragm lifts and actually forces air out of the lungs. When it drops, okay, it actually allows the lungs to expand and it actually allows the uh, air to come in because of a decrease in pressure. We won't worry about the pressure, we'll just worry about what the diaphragm is doing here. Okay? So we have a relaxed diaphragm, letting the air go out, and then a contracted diaphragm, uh, letting the air come in. Okay? Now, lung diseases. Um, there are a few here that we need to mention. Actually, probably the most of all the systems that we're going to mention, because uh, it seems to be some of the most common. When we talk about respiratory illnesses, we mainly think or talk about something either called asthma or lung disease. And I'm sure many of you have had experience with asthma. Okay? Asthma is what we call the inflammation of the bronchioles to prevent air traveling through the system. Remember, the bronchioles were the very tiny tubes that are the, that fill the lungs. Okay, the bron the bronchi were the two large branches. Bronchioles were the much smaller tubes. Okay, and when you, those uh, tubes become inflamed, uh, then you can't get air in and out, and that's called an asthma attack. Okay, so here on the left we have a normal passageway. Notice how the air can move very smoothly through that passageway. When you get asthma or asthmatics, that inflammation or the walls become swollen and sometimes can fill with mucus and no air gets in there. Okay? And that's when you have that very hard time breathing and you struggle for breath. Now, some lung diseases, they come in three different forms. Uh, usually it comes from the decision to smoke. And some of those are bronchitis. You can get bronchitis without smoking, but here's some situations where it might be. Emphysema is from smoking and lung cancer usually is from smoking or secondhand smoke. Okay. So bronchitis, it's kind of similar to asthma, except it's more like an, inf uh, an infection in the sense that it's narrowing of the bronchi. And there's a lot of mucus buildup. So how do cigarettes play a role in here? Well, because cigarettes contain so much gunk, they contribute to depositing that mucus. So it's normal bronchi on the left, a bronchi uh, with uh, bronchitis on the right there. You can see all that buildup of mucus in there. And I'm sure some of you have had bronchitis before where you've been very sick. It's that chest cough. You can actually feel your chest being heavier. That's because there's not air in your lungs. There's mucus buildup. So there's one uh, lung disease, bronchitis. Emphysema. This is from when uh, smoking. Uh, the smoke from the cigarettes damages, actually physically damages lung tissue. And it actually targets the alveoli. So if those alveoli become damaged or broken or destroyed, there's no gas exchange happening. And therefore, when you take that huge breath in, nothing's happening. Air is coming in, and it's not staying in the body. And then people have a hard time breathing. Uh, people with emphysema uh, report that they can't actually go outside to breathe because the cold air actually prevents them from breathing. So you can see on the, on the right side of the picture there, alveoli with emphysema, it's destroyed. Normal alveoli look very healthy, uh, each individual cell working on its own. Emphysema lungs, uh, it's destroyed and there's nothing left of them, making breathing very difficult. And then of course we have lung cancer. It's usually the growth of a tumor or a cancerous growth within the lungs or on top of the lungs. Uh, that growth can vary in size and position and location. Uh, however, the, the downfall is that lung cancer damages healthy lung tissue. And when healthy lung tissue is damaged, then it becomes an issue and you have healthy tissue that's no longer working and it becomes harder and harder and harder to breathe. Okay, So that's the gist of the uh, respiratory system, the most important of which being the connection here uh, at the alveoli. Again, if you're not sure about this connection or if it's really fast that I've gone through, and it, I have gone through it fast, uh, please just answer or ask questions uh, to class and we'll answer them there. Uh, but again, the important connection is here in the alveoli, so remember that one star highlight underline. Thanks very much.